Spitfire and the Mustang are two legendary planes. If their strength could be combined, the resulting vehicle would probably be the perfect piston engine fighter. Who knows? Maybe this idea is what inspired the designers at Martin Baker in late 1943 when they were developing their new prototype, the MB-5. The outside of the aircraft is reminiscent of the P-51. It has a set of radiators under the fuselage behind the wing like the Mustang. But its powertrain is a Griffin 83 that spins two three-bladed propellers in opposite directions. This layout provides more thrust than the ordinary five-blade prop installed alongside the same Griffin in the Spitfire 21. The MB-5 took off the first time in May 23, 1944, successfully completed testing until May 21, 1946. However, despite its excellent indicators, guess what? That's right, the aircraft never entered serial production. Immediately after the end of the war, the commanders of the RAF decided to halt development and put new piston engine fighters into production. In War Thunder, the Martin Baker MB-5 is part of the British premium aircraft tree. The plane's special features include its radiator located behind the wing, which is not typical of British aircraft. It also has a canopy with an excellent field of view. The MB-5 is armed with four good old Hispano Mark II 20mm guns with an ammo capacity of 800 rounds. The Hispanas are located on the wings and can fire 5 kg per second salvo. They are a little finicky and they don't like long bursts. The plane has no bomb racks. Its powertrain is a mighty Rolls-Royce Griffin 83 with 2,280 horsepower. As a result, the plane can go 600 km per hour near the ground and at an altitude of over 6,000 meters, it can hit 740 km per hour. However, the MB-5 is quite heavy over 5 tons and takes a long time to reach top speed. Its rate of climb is 20 meters per second. It's an aircraft for tough SOBs and doesn't have any armor at all. This is especially unfortunate for the pilot because he's sitting on two massive fuel tanks. But we aren't going to tell him about that. I can hear you! <clears throat> As for the rest, the wing has two longerons and flutter sets in at around 980 km per hour. Given its large mass, the aircraft speeds up urgently when nose diving and maintains good control at high altitudes, which is great. In combat, on the one hand, it has excellent speed indicators and decent climb. On the other hand, the aircraft is pretty heavy. It accelerates slowly at a constant altitude, and its 27-second turn in time makes it no Spitfire, no matter how badly the engineers might have wanted it to be. So pursuit and passing attacks are all we've got. Is that really all we've got? Pretty much, yeah. Its climbing speed won't let you be the first one in the air. Some of your allies will reach high altitudes in the same amount of time, as will your enemies. And that's where tactics come in. In this situation, your goal is not to rush forward, but to catch enemies that are fleeing high-altitude combat and dropping down a little lower. This is where you can intercept them and begin pursuit. The plane's high acceleration when nose diving and impressive flutter threshold works exceptionally well for this tactic. They'll also help you break away from enemy pursuit. You won't want to get into an extended dogfight. Your opponent will probably be more shafty than you. If your attack fails, speed up and fly away. Don't maintain a steady altitude, but rather increase your altitude again as you flee and look for a new target to swoop down on. Let's see what else do you need to know. At full thrust, the cooling system is clearly insufficient and the aircraft will start overheating. When the engine is overheating, the exhaust flap is completely shut. To avoid overheating, you can either control the flaps on the radiator manually or reduce thrust to 94%. This will cause the flap to work automatically and regulate the temperature. If you definitely don't want to mess around with manual controls, we recommend maintaining a constant thrust of 94% and only increasing to full thrust when attacking or gaining altitude. However, the aircraft does much better in the SB. The canopy on the cockpit was actually called exemplary during the testing phase. That's pretty much all there is to it. There is no extra landing gear or dead zones, but the rear view visibility is just 
awesome. All in all, the Martin Baker MB-5 is a tough plane to fly. It's finicky and you'll need to take flying it seriously, so we don't recommend it to new players. This aircraft is a great fit for arcade battles, where the overheating problem is irrelevant and the aircraft's extra weight isn't as noticeable. Although you can't say the same about its excellent weaponry. You can find more detailed information about the MB-5 in the War Thunder Encyclopedia.